I'm making this video in response to some issues that I've seen with my students and just understanding the difference between factoring and solving, especially when it comes to quadratic equations. So I just want to go through a couple of examples here. Um, let's say I have a problem like 2x squared plus 3x minus 35. All right, so the directions to that might say factor. So all that means is that I want to figure out two things that multiply together to give me 2x squared plus 3x minus 35. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. Um, if you've watched my guess and check video, you know that's kind of my preferred method. So the first thing I would do is take uh, 2 times 35, and that gives me negative 70. And then I'd figure out what multiplies to be negative 70 and adds to be my middle term of 3. Well, the most obvious thing that multiplies to be 70 is 7 and 10. And that definitely could give me a 3, especially since that's negative, like if I do a positive 10 and a negative 7. All right, that's going to multiply to be negative 70 and add to be positive 3. Now over here, I need these two numbers to multiply to be my first term. Well, my only options are 1 and 2, so I might as well put those in. Now for the 35, uh, negative 35, I could use 1 and 35, or I could use 5 and 7 for these two spots. But because of this 10 and this negative 7, I know one of these has to multiply to be 10, and one of these has to multiply to be negative 7. And so since I already have a 2x there, this guy is going to have to be a 5. That'll give me my negative t or my positive 10x that I need. So we'll make this one positive. And then I need the inside to be negative 7. So we'll let that be a negative 7, and that should do it. Let's see, 2x squared plus 10x minus 7x, that gives me my 3x in the middle, and then negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. So that would be my answer, and I'd be done. 2x minus 7 and x plus 5. Done. Okay. Now let's say I'm solving. Well, what's that going to look like? That's going to look like, uh, how about this? Big difference. What's the big difference? Let's make it red. Let's make it bold. What's the big difference when you're solving versus factoring? An equal sign, right? You're going to see an equal sign, which means you need to find the value of x that makes this equation true. Now, your ability to factor is going to be important because when you do this problem, what you have to do is set the equation to 0. So I'm going to move that 35 over, and that's going to give me, oh, I don't want to use red there. That's going to give me 2x squared plus 3x minus 35 equals 0. Okay, now how do I solve that? Well, guess what? You have to factor it. Awesome, we've already done that work. So 2x minus 7, x plus 5. What is this saying? This is saying I got two numbers. I have this number and I have this number, and they multiply together to be 0. 2x minus 7 is some number, one number x plus 5 is some other number, depending on what x is, and I need them to multiply to be 0. Well, the only way two numbers multiply to be 0, if a times b equals 0, then either a has to be 0 or b has to be 0. That's the only way two numbers can multiply to be 0. So either what's in the first parentheses has to come out to be 0, or what's in the second parentheses has to come out to be 0. And how do I get the first parenthesis to come out to be 0? Well, let's see. I'll just solve this. I'll add the 7 over, divide by 2. 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. So that's an answer. Here I'd subtract 5 from both sides. That's the other answer. Okay, so when I'm solving, I'm finding values of x that make the equation true. I don't want to take the time in this video, but if you took negative 5 and plugged it back in here for these x's, it better come out to be positive 35. And if you take 3.5 and put it in for this x and this x and put that in your calculator, it better come out to be 35. And guess what? Those are the only two real numbers. Actually, those are the only two numbers in the infinities that you could put in for these x's and have it come out to be 35. All right, you're solving. Way different than factoring. This is all there is to factoring. 
So really, factoring is a subset, is a portion, is a piece of solving. A lot of students, I tell them to factor something, they do this, and then they start solving. Right? Don't, don't solve it. There was no equal sign there. I just asked you to factor it. Let's look at another one that's a little more complicated. All right, let's start with a factoring one. Let's say I have a 12x squared plus 5x minus 2. If you want to pause the video and try to factor this on your own, I always think that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to use my little method again where I take my a times my c. So 12 times negative 2, that's negative 24. So I'm taking a times c. This is your a value, your b value, your c value. And I need to figure out what multiplies to be negative 24 and adds to be the middle number, the b number, which is 5. All right, what multiplies to be 24? 1 and 24, 2 and 12, those aren't going to do it. 3 and 8, that sounds promising. Because this is negative 24, so I'm going to have to use one positive and one negative. Uh, how about, let's see, you've probably got it before me, 8 and negative 3. Those would multiply to be negative 24 and add to be 5. Got it. Okay, so what do the 8 and the negative 3 tell you again about the factoring? Those are the outside, inside. One of them, and it doesn't matter which one, has to be 8x, and the other one has to be negative 3x. Okay? So now when I start thinking about what multiplies to be 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. What multiplies to be 2 is 1 and 2. All right, I only have one option there, so I'll put those in. Uh, 2... Now I got to be careful. I put the 2 here, but I really did want it here because I wouldn't have wanted to put the 2 here because I couldn't get the 3x. So 2, now what am I going to put here to get my 8x? Well, I'm going to have to use 4, right? So I'm going to use 4x here. Awesome, 3x, that's going to give me my negative 3. So I need a negative 3x and I need a positive 8. There's my factoring. My factoring is 4x minus 1. 3x plus 2. And you could check that by foiling it out and you should get 12x squared plus 5x minus 12. All right, now I'm going to write down a crazy equation. You ready? Here we go. 10 plus um, 2x. Let me, let me erase that. Let's do, write it nice. 12, uh, 10 plus 2x times the quantity, 6x plus 4. My students don't like these. Equals negative 3x, but they're not hard. They're just messy. It's like a messy room. Uh, plus 6 times the quantity 2 plus x. It's just a messy room. There's just stuff everywhere. We just got to clean it up and organize it. Okay, so let's start cleaning this up. If you want to try to pause the video and do this, great idea. All right. I'm going to distribute the 2x into these parentheses. So that gives me 12x squared plus 8x. Let's see, over here, this 3x is just by himself. He's not distributed. Only the 6 is multiplied by these parentheses. I'm only going to multiply the 6 in there. All right, what could we clean up? Well, I could uh, get this 3x and 6x together. That'd be a pot. 6x take away 3x is 3x. There's no like terms on the right-hand side. Maybe I'll write them in descending order. That might clean it up a little bit. See, it's just like organizing, cleaning up. Now, there's something that should be screaming at you here. Do you hear it? Do you hear it screaming at you? Here's a person screaming. Ah, This squared right here tells you. He looks kind of sad. Let's make him a happy screamer. That is telling you that you have to set this equal to zero. It's a quadratic and factor it or use the quadratic formula or whatever, but I'm focusing on factoring here. So that means I have to set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract the three X over here and I'm gonna subtract the 12. And lo and behold, just like magic, I get 12 X squared plus five X minus two equals zero, which is the factoring problem that we did over here. Okay, I did that on purpose. So if I'm solving, I got to clean all this up, get it equal to zero. Then I'd have to go through my factoring piece, which we already did. 
4x minus 1, 3x plus 2. Am I done yet? No, I'm not done because I'm solving, which means I have to find the value of, in this case, x is my variable. There's some number that if I plugged it in for all of these x's, that what the number on the left-hand side would equal the number on the right-hand side, and I have to figure out what that number is, or possibly numbers, and we're almost there. So I have two numbers down here. 4x minus 1 is something in this first parentheses, and 3x plus 2 is something in the second parenthesis, and I need them to multiply to be 0. The only way that's going to happen is either that first 4x minus 1 better come out to be 0, or that 3x plus 2 is going to have to come out to be 0, some x that makes that happen. All right, we can solve these. We'll add the 1 over, so we get 4x equals 1. We'll divide by 4. We'll get 1 fourth. That's an answer. It's crazy. You might try it just for fun. Take 1 fourth or 0.25, since you're using a calculator. Some calculators have fractions. Take 0.25 and put it in for x up here and see what you get on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And then take 0.25 and put it in for these x's on the right-hand side and do it out. You'll get the same number. I don't know what that number is, but they'll come out to be the same number. All right, now we'll solve this one. Uh, subtract the 2 over, divide by 3. Negative 2 thirds is the other answer. Crazy. I would have never guessed. So for solving, again, I've got two answers, and we expect that with a quadratic. Don't always get two answers with a quadratic. We could get one, or in some cases, zero. But if it's factorable like this, you're going to get one or two answers. So again, what's the factoring piece? All right, The factoring piece is really just right here. All this little piece of solving is using your skill of factoring. All right, guys, I hope that helps um, you distinguish between factoring and solving. Two ways to tell whether you have to factor or solve. The directions are very helpful. Secondly, if there's an equal sign you're solving, that's an equation. You're solving an equation. If there's no equal sign, then it's just an expression, and we're factoring that expression.